we do have a sign-up sheet for volunteers, or actually you take them down and take it with you so we know what it is. So the, the volunteer needs are outside on that bulletin board. People have been asking, so is this going to be regular for a while? The answer is yes. Going forward, will we continue the 8 o'clock service, the 9.30 service, and the 11 o'clock service? In two weeks, July the 5th, Children's Church will return. Nursery is available now. Children's Church will return in two weeks. Now, by Labor Day, by Labor Day, the plan will be the 8 o'clock service, like we've been doing it for the last two or three years with a few voices added. The 9.30 service is going to become our family-friendly service. We're going to add Sunday school to our 9.30 hour. So all the kids, regardless of age, can go to Sunday school during the 9.30 hour. Adults will be able to go to Sunday school as well, but if they don't want to, they can come inside the sanctuary and have a church service while all the kids are at uh, Sunday school. Should free up a whole lot of room. And then 11 o'clock will be very similar to what our 10 o'clock service used to look like. So that's going to be the uh, 9.30 service going forward. Uh, no other big announcements. If you have any questions, get with me after the service. Go ahead and stand as we do our non-physical greeting. We're standing, we're standing. It is Father's Day. Let's see. Josh, you get to choose our Father's Day greeting. What would you like to do today? Come on, man. Okay, this is it, this is it. Nod your head. This is the normal dad response. <laughs> whatever you say, dear, whatever you say. We're going to turn it over to the Facebook Live. This week, the Facebook Live service is at 11 o'clock. Next week, it'll be at 11 o'clock also. I'm going to change things up weekly to keep you on your toes. One reason we're doing it late is so that I want to make sure that the very last option for you to watch church is 11 o'clock so you have two other chances to actually get back in the sanctuary. Let's sing. All right. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Everybody say happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. All right. I'm going to start you out with a little clap this morning. See if you can help us.
Corey's dad who passed away this past week. Also Don's dad, Vernon Dorf, uh, passed away. And then uh, many of you maybe remember the Deaners, uh, Weldon Deaner, uh, also passed away this past week. So three families are grieving. We can lift them up. Also remember Skip Cox, um, dealing with the stroke and trying to get all that figured out so we can pray for Skip and the rest of his family and the doctors. Uh, continue to pray for our country. Continue to pray for uh, wisdom in our leaders and pray for our fathers who have a very important job to do. So let's bow our heads. We thank you, Lord, for this morning, for Father's Day. I thank you for each father here who has taken the initiative to come to church and bring his family with him. Um, we need more men like that in our country who are willing to live out their faith willing to take a stand for what's right and not give in to uh, political correctness or whatever else is going on in our culture. So we just thank you for those men who are willing to do that and just lift them up to you. Pray that they would continue to do that and that you would uh, empower more men to do that uh, as we move forward. We do want to pray for those families that lost loved ones. Uh, I mentioned three families. I'm sure there's more who are grieving. I would just pray for your comfort. We pray for Skip, who's recovering from the stroke. Just lift him up to you. Help the doctors and the therapists to uh, get everything straightened out there. We thank you for uh, the freedoms we have in this country and to worship together as a church. I'm so thankful that we have several opportunities to worship here at this church. I also need to remember that we can worship every day. We don't just have to come to this building to worship. Hopefully, each day is the worship experience for us as we live our lives live our lives in service to you, and hopefully uh, we live authentic lives, and people see us, they see the love of Christ. We do pray for our offering, pray for those uh, who give, that you would just bless those, and that you would uh, take that money and multiply it, and it would be used wisely, not only here in our community, but also the various ministries ministries that we, uh, that we support. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Chippy Coops only have two doors. Because if they had four, it would be chicken sedans. <laughs>
Wah, wah. <laughs> Who was the smallest person in the Bible? Nehemiah. <laughs> Nehemiah. <laughs> Need an ark? I know a guy. <laughs> How does Moses start his morning? Anybody? Hebrews, a pot of coffee. <laughs> In February, March? No, but April, man. <laughs> the greatest comedian in the Bible. Samson. He brought the house down. <laughs> Those are awful. Awfully good. Just like what I grew up with. We may all laugh at dad jokes, but it sure is funny when we laugh at the dads laughing at their own jokes. Now, the good thing for you is since we got it introduced it this way, I don't have to tell any dad jokes and laugh at them myself today. Question for the men. Did you marry up? Did you marry up? Most of you will definitely say, yes, I married up. This idea of marrying out of your league, this idea of marrying someone who you probably should not have been able to catch, someone who actually makes you look good better than you can make you look yourself. Now, if you did, how hard was the chase? How hard was it to convince her to hang out with you, date you, marry you? This is a picture of me and Kendra. I mean, look at the babies. Back in the day, that's at a Kenny Chesney concert, I think, in the Astrodome. I have no clue what year it was, but we were not dating. This was in the era of our time, the time frame that Kendra calls it, just hanging out. Now, some people, some people, whenever you meet the one, you say it's love at first sight. For me and Kendra, it was love at first order. So, Kendra was my boss at Chick-fil-A, and from the very first time she told me what to do, I liked it so much, I knew I wanted her to tell me what to do the rest of my life. But, it was not a good first impression. Like, I did not do a good job that very first time we met or talked on the phone from a work standpoint. I started off in a deep, deep hole. She told me she would never date anyone she worked with, which I did. She would never date anybody who was younger than her, which I was. She would never, ever, ever date anyone who was in thinking about going into ministry, which when we met, that was the plan. But after about six, seven months, she finally gave in to my constant whatever, and she said we could hang out. Now, little did I know that her other friends called this something else. They called this the probationary period. I was on probation for three months because I had three months to prove to her that I was marriage worthy. I had three months to prove to her I was marriage worthy. I had to prove to her that I could become her best friend. I had to prove to her that I was more emotionally stronger than she was and spiritually stronger as well. Now, of course, since we're here today and she's in the room and I'm telling the story, I was able to do that. It actually was pretty quick. We started hanging out in January, and we were married in December. But here's what I've learned throughout my marriage life. The woman makes the man, and the man makes the woman. The woman makes the man, and the man makes the woman. And as we go through this, since we're actually in a church service, we come here to worship God. The assumption during all this is God is involved, even if I don't always say it. So the foundation is God, but the man makes the woman, and the woman makes the man. We're going to an unusual Father's Day text, but it's actually usual for Mother's Day. Proverbs 31 talks about the virtuous wife, the virtuous woman. But in that text... It also talks about the dude, too. It talks about the dad. It talks about the husband of the virtuous wife. So in this chapter, we have the virtuous woman, the virtuous wife. 
We have the virtual, virtuous, the husband of the virtuous wife. But we also learn about what a virtuous couple looks like. Proverbs 31, verse 10 says, Who can find a virtuous wife? Some of your translations are going to use the word excellent. I like the word virtuous better. Who can find a virtuous wife? Earth is far above rubies. I like this because it actually confirms something for us. A good woman is hard to find. In return, a good man is hard to find. Becoming a good godly couple might even be hard to find. This word virtuous, it actually is talking about a lady who has a reputation in the community that kind of started off really small, but over the course of time got bigger and better, bigger and better, to the point almost of a form of social nobility. So when people saw her, they saw how virtuous she was. It kind of supports this idea of, guys, when you're thinking about your girl, you should treat them like a queen. I won't talk too much about that one. But the adolescent boy in me, when I look at the word virtuous, I don't necessarily think of nobility. I think of a female with all the curves. There's this sound that I would make in high school, maybe to come out as this. <laughs> so someone who makes you go that's kind of the virtuous side but in this chapter we learn what it looks like to be a virtuous couple or for you guys how do you keep your wife virtuous how do you keep your wife virtuous verses 11 and 12 says the heart of her husband her husband key phrase for today mentioned three times in this chapter the heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. Trust her character. Trust her ethics. Trust her decision making. Trust her spending trusts her friends and her social status, has confidence in everything about her and the return of this confidence that he is completed. She does him good all the days of her life. The lesson is this. Confidence in wife equals completeness in life. Confidence in wife equals completeness in life in life. It's not this. It's not like the guy who said, my wife says that I never listen, or something like that. That's not the idea. It's confidence in everything that is about your spouse, your husband, or your wife equals completeness in life. It's a circle. It's a circle. It's kind of, you give the confidence to her, in return, she will complete you like the Bible says to you. To the ladies, an application and a thought. Number one, be trustworthy. Be trustworthy. Live a life that supports trust so that he can have confidence in you. So make it available. Whatever the relationship is, be that person who is trustworthy for the other person specifically in this passage, for him. The other one, it says, when he has confidence in her, what comes back to him is she is meeting a lot of his needs. So you need to be trustworthy, but you also, as a woman, as a wife, need to be aware of his needs. What are the top five needs of a man? Number one is respect. Number one is respect and admiration. Now, for most men, we define respect about half the same. There are going to be some things that all men will classify as respect. But also, the man you married, there's 50% of him that is unique to him. So you have to know him and what respect means to him because it's probably different from any other guy. You tell me, you hear me say all the time that guys, you need to have a PhD in your wife. Well, ladies, you need to at least have a bachelor's degree in your husband. That's this idea of respect. Number two. Number two. The number two thing that a man needs. Sex. 
Yes, I just said it. I mentioned sex in church. And you're like, some guys are going, did he just say that? Just said it. I'm actually telling the ladies, you do need to have sex with your husband. I just said that in church. And some guys are going, I'm so glad I came to church today. <laughs> Best church service ever. <laughs> Needs to be that way. It actually is important. It is a need for the man. Number three, an attractive wife. An attractive wife. There's something about a guy that wants to show off his wife. So we want to parade you around going, hey, look, I landed her. I married her up. She's mine. And you can see the difference in the two when you just look at him. <laughs> he did good. How did that happen? I don't know. Number four, recreational companionship. Recreational companionship. Men really do want to hang out with their wife. They want to do stuff with them. It doesn't always come out, but it's there. Number five, domestic support. Domestic support. Any idea of the housework, the home, the kids, the family, all of that kind of stuff. A man, even though it's not one of the top two or three, really does want domestic support. Keeps going. Verse 23. Her husband, key phrase, is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the way. Now, interesting thing about this word known. It's kind of the mirror of the word virtuous that was mentioned in verse 10. So she has kind of ascended the social status point where people see her and they go, man, that is a godly lady. That is a virtuous lady. That is somebody we want to be like. Well, the opposite is that this guy has excelled to the point of leadership in the community. When he walks in, people knows who he is without him having to introduce himself. And he has leverage and he has leadership because he sits among the elders, the leaders in the gates at the decision-making point of the community. Back in the day, they would have the wall that would support the city, kind of protect the city. And as soon as you walked in, they'd be like an office, a box right there. And that's where the leaders met. So this man, the husband of the virtuous wife, the Proverbs 31 man, sits among the leadership in the community. Now, here's what I think. I think he was able to get there because of the support of his wife. I think she supported him. She made him better to the point where he was confident enough to go out into society and get to a, a position of leadership. Here's the lesson. Support inside the home leads to significance outside the home. Support inside the home leads to significance outside of the home. For a man, this is because he doesn't have to worry with anything that's going on. He has complete freedom to do whatever he needs to do as a man because at home, she's got this. She's got this. So he is comfortable and confident to go out into the world. Now this goes both ways. The wife should support the husband, but the husband also should support the wife. Uh, you think about geese flying. They fly in this V formation. If you don't remember, like, why? It's because that, that person who's in the lead, the lead is flying, and then it's building up so much wind that the wind and the power and the velocity goes from one to the other to the other to the other, almost like a domino effect of power. Each one of them gets stronger the longer it gets to the point where they have 71% more mobility and speed when they are flying in unison because each one is supporting the other one. Great song, The Wind Beneath My Wings, kind of has that similar idea. Well, in the marriage relationship, the husband should be supporting the wife, the wife should be supporting the husband so that they can go out and have a significant life outside the home. To the ladies, the ladies, number one, support your husband. Support your husband in everything he does. As long as it's not a sin, support him in everything he does. And I'll add something to this. Make him better. Make him better. Make him look good. Kendra makes me look good, except for when I change my shirt in between the 8 and the 9.30 service and put on a t-shirt. She told me, got on to me, that is not what you wore out of the house today. That I changed the t-shirt because the price tip was wearing her t-shirts and I wanted to be like the price tip. So I changed my shirt. But support him. 
point out the opportunities. Brag on him to him so he has the confidence to actually pursue stuff that maybe he wouldn't normally pursue if you didn't give him that little nudge. But one danger here, don't nag. Don't nag. Most men don't want to nag you. Verse 28 29. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband, he prays her time also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. The kids praise their mama. You know why? Because the husband, the daddy, the father was praising the mom. They caught it. They learned it by watching him. He praises them, so they praise him. And then the cool thing, honey, there are a lot of girls out there, but you excel them all. You are better than the rest. This guy had a one-woman mentality. Had a one-woman focus. He only had eyes for one girl, and it was the Proverbs 31 woman because he was a Proverbs 31 man. Here's what we learned from the Proverbs 31 couple. Confidence, completeness, support, and significance should be what we are as a couple going after. Confidence, completeness, support, and significance. But we're going to have some problems doing this. We're going to have some hurdles to get over. Number one is just poor communication. Poor communication. The number one reason for divorce in America is money rights and money problems. The number two reason for divorce in America is sex. Either not enough or somebody went outside of marriage to get it. And that causes a divorce. The root problem is actually poor communication. People stop talking. And if you stop talking to your spouse, you will never become a Proverbs 31 couple. No support of each other. They're more selfish than supportive, and that will ruin a relationship. Ingratitude. Not saying thank you. Taking the other one for granted is not what you want to do. That will block you from becoming a Proverbs 31 couple. So what should you do? You should talk more. Talk more. You see, I have it one time, two times, three times. Men, here's your challenge for the week. One time this week, talk about something spiritual with your spouse. One time this week, talk about something spiritual with your spouse. Whether it's something you learned, could be something you liked about the sermon, something you heard on the radio, but from a spiritual standpoint, share it. If you're not doing it, one time with your spouse. Two times. Limit your family talks, your children talks, two times this week. Try to talk less about kind of the families that have limited it to two. Three times, this is my favorite, three non-result-oriented conversations with your spouse this week. Talk to them about nothing. This is where sharing a hobby with your spouse is big. This is where just talking about nothing and just kind of connecting on a kind of a very low level. Shoot the bowl with your spouse. It'll actually strengthen your ability to communicate. Because if you can talk about nothing, you should be able to talk about something when it matters. Get involved outside the home. Sometimes guys just need to get out just a little bit more. Number three, praise her more. Praise her more. Tell her thank you. Compliment the little things she does. Tell her how much she completes you. Tell her how she makes you look good. Compliment, praise her more. Because we need to become a Proverbs 31 man, a Proverbs 31 woman, a Proverbs 31 couple. Because the world does not provide a good picture of that kind of stuff. Specifically dads. Think about like the TV dads. Some of them make us laugh. Some of them we just nod our head at. Maybe some of them are like, maybe I should try that. I don't know. But the picture we get of the dad based on culture is very, very low. They don't project a proper picture 
of what a father, a daddy, a husband should be. They've really kind of downplayed the role of a man in people's lives. They've downplayed the biblical picture of what a godly man, a godly husband, a godly dad is. But we can actually learn something. If you're a dad, you can actually learn something by watching all these. It's this idea that every one of them has goofed up. Every one of them has messed up. Every one of them in some area of life has fallen short. And when we look at them, and we can even compare ourselves to them, we are reminded that we fall short too. We fall short in our role as a husband. We fall short in our role as a dad. We fall short in our role as an employee or an employer. We definitely fall short in our role as a follower of Jesus. And the only way, the only way we, we close that gap or we improve to not be like the TV dads, but to be like the dads that are mentioned in Scripture is by continually to follow God. To go to the great example of God the Father, but also loving people, loving our spouse, loving our family, like Christ loved the church in a sacrificial and a submissive manner. It's only when we insert the gospel and in every part of our life, do we really change? Do we really get better? Do we really become the man or the woman of God that God has designed us to be? Starting with that idea that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He was buried. He proved that he was dead. He rose on the third day, defeating Satan, defeating evil, defeating death reconnecting us to God in a relationship form, seen by many, ascending to heaven and sitting down as the king of the universe and telling us to follow him until he comes back in the way that he designed us to in the Bible. When we have that relationship and we commit to following him the way he designed us to be, the gap starts to close. And it's only when the gospel is inserted in every area do we change the perception of what a husband is. Do we change the perception of what a father is? Do we change the perception of what a follower of Jesus is? And it starts with that step of believing in the gospel. The next step is living it out. Father, our prayer is that you would open our hearts, our minds, and our souls to really the areas that we fall short as a mom, as we shall fall short as a dad, as we fall short as a, as a parent. Let us know those things and open our heart to be willing to change. Insert through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ the information and the passion we need to close the gap to be more like God the Father and love like Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Facebook Live, you get to be dismissed. Next week's message will be at 11 o'clock also. I hope to see you there or see you in-house. Everyone else, you're dismissed.